How fast do reindeer have to run to be able to fly? How many candy canes do they make a year? How much tinsel's made in this live stream? We're going to go over the science of Christmas. peeps and welcome to another episode of our haunted travels let's talk paranormal live i am your host sean donnelly and i'm your co-host marianne donnelly hey in this live stream stick around we're gonna have some fun we're gonna go over some of the science at christmas but before we do that we're gonna do a little bit of housekeeping you love that part yeah don't you yeah don't you yeah Alrighty, so while we are getting things going here, everybody who's here in chat, please leave a comment and let us know where you are from. Please do. Alright, All right. cut that going. There we go. Boom. Okay. Look at that, I knew where everything was. Mm, look at you. Almost looks like I've been sitting here trying to get ready. <laughs> well, so far we have Country Girl Paranormal, Joy Stewart, and Paratech, Par Paranormal Tech. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, so let's say, talk Paratech. about... Oh, and Abraxas has joined us. Hi, Abraxas. <clears throat> so you're, you're jumping ahead. You're jumping ahead. I am? Yeah. Oh. Let's tell them about the show supporters. Oh, okay. Go ahead. You're up. Well, our show supporters today are author Ellie... PSPR Erie PA and YouTuber Herman. Which PSPR is PSPR Paranormal Pursuit and right. YouTube Herman is Herman the Great. Ooh. And I forgot that one. And our super supporter there uh, from uh, Patreon. Patreon. There we go. From Patreon. Be you, be unique. Alrighty. So how can they become a show supporter? Well, they can become a show supporter uh, by following us on Twitter liking retweeting and commenting on our posts and being in the top three for that week or you can be a five dollar a month or more patreon supporter all right all right folks this is a live stream so a little disclaimer i'm probably going to make a mistake especially since we're going over this science stuff and you know she's the scientist in the group but uh, we got some cool stuff we're going to go over. It's kind of like, um, you know, some of the statistics and some of the, I don't know how to explain it. Some of the, like, how things. How things work. Work, that kind of stuff. A little bit kind of trivia related, that type of thing. So it's going to be kind of cool. Um, if you haven't shared this out, please do right now. See if we can get some more people in here. That would be awesome. And... Yes. Let's see what the next slide is. Who we are. That's are you going to do it? Nope. You, you, why? Because. You haven't done it in like you're, forever. You're better at it. All right. Like we said at the beginning of the show, Sean and Marianne don't any Panic D videos. Of course, you guys know that because you're on this channel watching it. That's However, right. we're the owners of PanicD.com and DarkShadowGhostTours.com. And PanicD.com is a database of over 800 locations across the United States. And it's growing. I mean, people are sending me locations like crazy uh, you can send them to us an email or tweet them or whatever and we'll get them added to the database uh, but our haunted travels features over 200 locations that we've personally been to and on our channel every week we feature one of those locations there i'm getting quicker at that yes you are that's pretty much it i know i'm forgetting something but i don't know all right now it's time to do the roll call go all ahead all right See, give people some time to come in here. Yeah, see, it still says the same thing, and it's not because I know there's other people here. So I'll just try to go back through the uh, through the chat. All um, right. Abraxas Paranormal is here. Hello. Desmond's Donders Hello. is here. De you know Desmond's Donders? You know Donders is the name of... Donder. The... Zard. Oh, okay. She knew. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Then we have Paranormal Tech... Uh, oh, 
I guess I need to switch Joy back. Joy Stewart. Switch back to us. Fallen Angel. Country Girl Paranormal. I think I hit everybody that has said hello. If I didn't, say hello. All right. So last week we said we were going to give away one of our union books. I'm not going to hold it up there because when I did last week, it set that camera off. Okay. But notice our shirts match the cover. That's right. Of the book. That's right. See that? It's because we're part of the Elf Hand, or the Elf right. Union. Um, so let's give that Santa's away. Santa's 1225. In this show, we're going to give another one away. So everybody's here. We'll give them a chance and tell them how they get entered to win one. And um, uh, we, we'll sign these and send them out to you, too. This is something we wrote. Oh, man. What was the date you looked it, it up last 12? week? 2012? I think it's... Here. Yep, yeah, 2012. 2012. It's a book that we have out there. Yep. Available on Amazon if you don't win, but I'll explain how you can win that here in a second. But uh, we had three people that entered it we from did. last week, so we, we want to go ahead and do that. We're not going to use the diggy 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 thing because three. there's only three. We could do this. And we'll just do it from. manually. We'll so use our hats. We got Nancy Reed. Let's see if I Nancy can pull this Nancy Reed. Up. In the and bucket. Show them in the camera. And okay. we've got Happy Trails Hiking. Happy Trails Hiking. And we've got Sid, Sid Hart. All right. So there okay. we go. Shake them up, shake them up. up. Shake them up, shake them up. You want to pull one or you want me to pull it? Want me to pull it? Yeah, go ahead. All right. So pulling one. All right. So the winner of this book is Happy Trails Hiking. I don't know how close we want to get to the camera. We're, yeah, we don't we're get freaked real out close. about the camera now. <laughs> <laughs> Last week it but, set it off and I couldn't so get it. Happy Trails Hiking. Yeah. So Happy Trails Hiking won this one. And then maybe next okay. week one of you so, can win. If you guys want to enter to win one I'll of just, these books I'll just put next this, week. I'll just put this yeah, right in the go. book so we remember who it goes to. There we go. There mm -hmm. we go. No list for um, me this time. If you want to enter, again, we're going to give away another one next week for this show. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically what you do. Now, you guys can follow us. Please follow us. You know, you don't have to be a paid subscriber on Patreon, but you can follow the page. And I have a video out there that shows you how to do that. But if you just go to our Patreon page, in this time you'll see the post that has the, the, the book and just reply to that post with hashtag Santa. Ooh, Santa. Hashtag Santa for a chance to win that next year. So lady, or next week. Lady next Vamp year. has, has uh, entered as well, and she says uh, that she got here just in time to hear her name. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's yes. Lady Vamp. So, <laughs> hey, you could try again uh, for next week. That's right. And um, there you go. So you, she knows how to do it because she, she did does. it last week. That's right. But, um, but I thought that was funny. She, she said, I got here just in time to hear my name. But guess who's not here? I haven't Kay. seen I haven't seen Kay Happy from Trails. Happy Trails, so yeah, she, she doesn't know. She could be editing. She's she got doesn't that know that she won. Well, I'm not gonna tell her. <laughs> we'll see if she goes back and watches the replay. <laughs> I won't tell her. Oh, All right, so just a couple announcements. We don't have that many. Uh, we're week three of season two, I believe. Just wrapped it up, or we're going to it. Something I don't know. Like that. I'm, I'm a little bit ahead on our video, so I get a little confused. Uh, so we just we just wrapped up uh, this week Castle Noel. Uh, not a paranormal location, at least right. we haven't found any paranormal claims. But it is a really old church. Yeah, it's it's a it's an old church. But uh, if you guys like Christmas decorations and, and Christmas movies and that kind of stuff, check out those videos because right. it's some cool stuff. He's got props from pretty much every Christmas movie. Yeah, yeah. So we have the, And they're not the little ones that I get. No. <laughs> they're the big Yeah. The yeah. It's crazy the stuff that, yeah. that he has. But um the uh the man saving Christmas is about uh Mark Claus, the mm -hmm. owner of Castle Noel and in that one we kinda talked a little bit about the um store um where store he sells windows. No, oh, the store oh, oh. windows. Okay. But then the visiting one, instead of like doing a history, we just did more of the uh, movie props. So those are out there. Uh, we also, well, we, I keep saying we, I, no, we, 
I guess we're we. Uh, I created a playlist of all of our Christmas related videos. Okay. But I have to go back and add the live stream, which we're going to talk about later that we did last year, uh, where we talked about. Uh, was that one live? Right. I think it was a live. Hmm. It was either a live or a video. I have to go and find that and make sure that that's in there. But I'll talk about that later. But there is a uh, playlist on our channel. I think it's the first one. When you go to our channel, you'll see Christmas related. And there's some neat stuff that we did last year okay. um, that you can go and see. And then I'm adding the Christmas ones to it. As they come out. As they come out. All yeah. Right. Now, next week on our channel, for those of you who are here, you're going to um, hear it now. Uh, but uh, we're going to be doing uh, Lanterman's Mill uh, here uh, that's close to us. And mm -hmm. we went down to the Christmas Christmas at the Mill, so yeah. we get that video coming out. It's called their old-fashioned Christmas. <clears throat> yeah, I like I like that, that video. It came out pretty cool. And uh, it's got Christmas music on it and things like that. And we got the history and all that stuff about uh, German Lanterman and his mill. So that's coming out this next week. So, and that place does have paranormal claims. In our location video next Friday, uh, we have a picture that we took down in the basement of Lanterman's Mill that's kind of interesting. That's in that video. So, a little bit of potential paranormal evidence mm -hmm. if you want to check that out. Mm -hmm. All right. I do have a shout out, but I forgot to find it. So, you do you did. want to talk a minute and let me look? Sure. I was asking if everybody was oh, ready for the holiday. Uh, and uh, so Joy says that Sparky has his Santa sweater. And Desmond Donder said that they have Desmond packed and ready to hit the road. They just have to put food in it on Friday. So that should be super awesome. Pretty cool. Yes. But nobody else talked about their holiday. So if they're ready for the holiday i'm not ready for the holiday not even close <laughs> we haven't really not uh, even close we haven't really done that whole shopping thing yet we did a little bit of shopping but uh definitely didn't get to everybody on our list yet no but we're getting there yeah we're getting there i i feel kind of bummed because normally we do our christmas shopping like in one night sitting on the couch and it done and then packages show up but quite didn't happen that way this year so <laughs> But well, that's her. you only did that last year. That was the first year that you got everything that way. But normally we go we go out to the stores. Keep talking because that came up there. I think unfortunately that's we go out to the stores. All the craziness and madness. Who who thinks that uh, they have everything ready? Lady Vamp said they got a tree. They broke down and got a tree. Woo! And went and saw light, the lights, too. There we go. That's getting into there the Christmas you are. spirit. All right. So I do want to do a shout-out uh, because there we, I don't know where my fancy smancy video music. So I'll just do that. There we go. Shout-out. Shout-out. Okay. <laughs> um, but uh, I caught a channel this week. I, I've been uh, subscribed to the channel, and I watched a couple of the videos. But I caught a live stream with these guys for the first time and it was fun they go live every uh wednesday let me find the computer screen so you can see what i'm talking about uh they go live every wednesday um and the live stream i was on they were he was putting up uh, pictures of christmas movies and uh you had to guess what movie it was from okay and uh this is jc uh Oh, JC TV or JC Family Vlogs. I'm going to put a link in the description uh, after we're done here to the channel. But um, it's, it was pretty cool. I mean, and, and the it's the whole family that does the channel. And each one has, like, different videos that they do. But um, they were on there during the live stream, all of them. And every time when somebody come on knew they would ring a bell and it was it was actually kind of fun and then they did a giveaway at the end and i won the giveaway no i never way. win anything ever ever what'd you win i'm not telling you 
<laughs> no, it was an Amazon gift card. <laughs> oh, well, you spent, you shop on Amazon, so yeah, that's so good that's for you. So that's for me. Yeah, I, I do eBay, you do Amazon, you know. Yeah, that's going into the new camera fund. <laughs> oh, a new camera for what? Oh, I've been telling you, I've been, well, been speaking it into fruition. I don't think you told me. You said you wanted a new computer in here. You're going to get a new camera? Oh, kind of both. a camera. The, oh, jeez. Yeah, I want them both. But uh, anyways, check them out uh, because it, I had fun. I mean, that's one of those channels that's family oriented and you could go have some fun and, you know. Okay. So I'll put a link down in the description so you guys can, uh, can check them out later. Because I don't think you could bring this up and drop that link. Probably not. Okay. I don't know. I'm not very organized today. That's okay. Today's been a long day. One so TWG7 has joined us. Hello, hello. Hello. All right, let me go back to the... And Budget Bushcraft is here. Budget Bushcraft. He's joined us too. So hello to you too. All right. Do you What's have uh, your segment? I don't have a segment today. Are you going to? I wasn't going to do one today because it's okay. the holiday we'll season and, and I shouldn't be buying for myself. That's now. right. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay. I should be buying for myself. I won't say that I haven't, but I yeah. will say that I shouldn't. So I think we're done with this show. Yeah, we are. Okay. We're done with that slideshow. All okay. right. So now we're going to go to this <laughs> one. All right. So that takes us to where we're going to talk about I what our topic so. is for the day? I think so. Hey, we were wow. done in 16 minutes. That's amazing. <laughs> All right. So today's show, we are talking about the science of Christmas. Now, first, before we start this, has anybody seen, uh, it was a Discovery Channel documentary. Uh -huh. It was the 90s, back in the 90s. Yes. It's called The Science of Christmas. And it's narrated, oh, what's the guy's name? Uh, the guy from he's Home a guy Alone. from Home Alone, not Joe Pesci, but the other the guy, other one. the other Sticky Bandit. Yeah, that guy. If anybody knows his name, leave it in chat. But um, if you have seen the Science of Christmas before, let us know uh, because some of this, well, most of it is from that documentary. Marianne actually t teaches. I don't know if you still do it. I don't. Uh, I did it more when I did. Um, the physics and chemistry section. Okay. And so you just I don't, don't do it for fun. No. Now I make them do a big dichotomous classification key activity. It takes two days. They love it. Well, we did it last year with the tech club. <laughs> yes. Didn't we? Um, yeah. But Marianne does a lesson, uh, the science of Christmas, which uses that video and then does a a little thing. But yes. I thought it'd be kind of cool to do this as a live stream. So. Are we ready? Sure. Are you guys ready? You ready to get started? If you're ready to get started, let us know in chat. Is, uh... well, I guess I should bring chat up. So I can see what's going on, too. Where's the chat at? I can't believe how old some of these Christmas movies that you watch every year are, you know? They're just kind of... Uh, so the name was Daniel Stern, by the way. I Daniel just, Stern. I looked it up. There we go. While we were that was busy. The name. That was who it was. That so. was it. Ooh. What'd you do? Just collapsed chat. Sorry, guys. I hope it didn't hurt. <laughs> you collapsed it on them? Yeah, I collapsed chat nice. on them. Nice. All right. I think it's Actually, pouring down rain outside right now. Yeah, I hear, it is. I hear rain. It's, of course it's raining. They're supposed to take care of our leaves tomorrow. Yeah. They said they wanted to wait until it got until it um, dried up. Dried so up. It's pouring down rain. Mm -hmm. So yeah, today was a very, very long day. This is the third week, final week. We're done. Photos with Santa. Yes, my kids are still going to do some on Friday. We're done. But they're we're using done. The equipment. Right, they're using yeah. our equipment. So the first weekend of December, we did that big craft show slash holiday auction slash blowout that we put on, or you know we're. The chair people. Um, that was the first weekend. Then the second weekend, we did a uh, craft show. Well, you had ACT, and I did photos with Santa at the craft show. Mm -hmm. And today, we did photos with Santa, which was less hours but more children. 
And it was there were a lot of kids around. Austin Town Ooh. Bounce, which is a place here in, in, in Austin Town that has those big blow ups, but they're indoors. Yes. And Santa came and, oh, and the noise and the, my head's next to the alarm of people coming in the door, beep, 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 beep. beep <laughs> and I was just like, oh, glad it's over. All right. So, all right. Do we have anything in chat that we need to go over? Well, Halos and Heathens doing? has joined us. They're Halos stopping in to say Heathens. hello. And Budget Bushcraft says that they're listening. They're trying to play with with all their new gear and moving into their studio for the winter. So they're going awesome. to uh, be listening primarily today. And TWG7 is going to get some coffee. All right. I got a half a cup and then we're going to have to go get <laughs> some more coffee too. But, all right. So I think we're ready to get going. Yes, yes, I yes. I know Halos and Heathens is probably just stopping by to say hi because they go they go live, live with theirs. Yep. Coming pretty up. Pretty close. Mm -hmm. So. All right, here we go. The science of Christmas. I, I don't think I have one where it's the slides and us. They don't want to see us. They don't want to see us. Damn. Oh no, TWG Susben said that they've misplaced their tiny mug. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Maybe you guys. Maybe t maybe we can get the uh, the time team. To go back on Thursday night to go and find her mug. No, nah, they're going to be too busy getting Rufus back. That's Thursday? Yeah, Thursday the 20th. Yeah. Timeless. Timeless. And it's going to be a, and it's going to be a Christmas episode too. They don't so if know you what you're talking about once you tell them. If you haven't seen the the TV show Timeless, you don't know what you're missing. Uh, but they canceled it. Uh, but they allowed them to make a 2 hour finale to the entire program uh and so that is going to be on i believe it's eight o'clock on nbc Mary Saturday, Ann's a big or, uh, of, thursday the 20th of a couple things jeff mudgett the show timeless mm -hmm. anything eBay. creepy <laughs> ebay yeah so yeah that she's like in their facebook group and all this other stuff and yeah She's telling me, oh, you can't believe what's going on. I know. So that's that's on uh, Thursday, uh, 8 p.m. NBC. So I'll, I know what we'll be doing Thursday that's right. at 8 p.m. Yes, it's two hours, and it's going to be Christmas, and they're going back to find Rufus. I just know it's the day before the our Christmas break. Yeah, last, yeah, last day. For the break. For mm -hmm. break. All right, so let's talk about Christmas dinner a little bit. How many people have... If you have ham on Christmas, ham dinner, uh, let us know in chat. But, you know, unless you're a big turkey eater, we're a big turkey eater. We eat turkey. Well, we have both. We turkey have both and for ham. Christmas. We have turkey on Thanksgiving, but for Christmas we have turkey and ham. Um, so we're going to talk about turkey. We don't have anything for ham here. No. But, uh, we have turkey. Yes. So how many people have turkey for Christmas? Yes, have ham. Ham with the with turkey, turkey, says Desmond. Ham and turkey. Uh, budget Bushcraft has ham. Halos and Heathens says not them. So, Halos and Heathens, what do you have? Do you have turkey? Do you have one of those tofu turkeys? Tofu? I don't know. Uh, and then uh, TWG7 and Budget Bushcraft are splashing each other right now. Well, I'm looking at chat. that. I had chat. You had there. chat, yeah. Uh, Lady Vamp says they do both if there was time uh, and that they were blessed to have a turkey and ham this year. So if they have it, they they do both. Uh, TWD7 says they used to do turkey uh, because the kids hate ham. So now they're going back to turkey or to ham. Oh, I could do that. That'll work. Maybe. Okay. All right, so let's talk about turkey. The science right. behind, there's a whole science behind cooking a turkey. There is. There, there is. is. There is. All right, so here's a question. What causes the different cooking times for the leg and the breast of the turkey? Anybody know? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Anyone? I don't know about Thank that, you. but um, we have a couple of lasagna folks in the house. And uh, Kathleen Lo Loverso, 
I, I never can do that. Uh, says, hello, Donleys. And uh, whether we have ham or turkey, there is always lasagna. And somebody else said they have lasagna, too. So. Okay, so we're getting answers to my question. Now we so have. So we're getting bone, the toughness, the, the dark and light meat, the meat, the fat content, the density. All okay. right. Okay. Science lady, you want to explain this? Basically, uh, the legs and thighs, they have to do a lot more work to move this bird around. And so it gets a lot more needs of oxygen, and so they have to get a lot more myoglobin and things like that that go into that area. And so it's actually the myoglobin that they have that changes uh, them to looking dark, and that's what's going to allow it to also... What was that big word? Myoglobin. Myoglobin. Yes. Yes. So it's uh, definitely uh, a little bit more fatty... Uh, as well. Somebody says that the dark is tougher. I, I've never s noticed that. I've always thought that the dark meat was a little bit more like duck, a little bit more greasy. But they say it's tougher. Okay. Maybe they just mean like, I am tough. I can do it. <laughs> but do you know that there's a scientific equation to figure out how long to cook your turkey to the, the correct doneness? Is that a word? It is now. <laughs> it is now. I just made it a word. There's actually an equation for that. Ah, and TWG7 said, yes, they did say tougher because it's used more, not because it's actually tough to eat. Okay. So, perfect. I got it right. So based on 325 degrees Fahrenheit, this is Panofsky's turkey constant formula. That means to cook it to Perfection. perfection. <laughs> there you go. Do you want so to explain that? So the time that? to cook is the weight time to the two-thirds power, uh, and then divide that by 1.5. So the there weight you go. or so you mass. you guys write that down? Yes. That tells you how long to that cook That would be turkey. the perfect turkey. So the time to cook perfect it would turkey. be the weight of it to the two-thirds power divided by 1.5. Uh, Does anybody follow that equation? I don't think anybody follows that equation. Most of the time, people just look on the package that comes with it. Or they get one of them turkeys that has one of those things that go, popping when it's done. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and Budget Bushcraft says, when the red thingy pops. Right. When the red thing pops, <laughs> exactly. the turkey's done. Exactly. Exactly. I wonder if I could add us to this. Go ahead and talk for a minute. Let's okay. see if I can add us to this. Uh, Lady Vamp says, can you put that in English? Basically, it's look at the package, and it'll tell you on the package <laughs> how long to cook it for. Uh, but basically, it's about 20 minutes per pound of cooking time. So cook for about 20 minutes per pound. I think I just did. Did you do it? it. So look we'll be you. up in the little we'll corner. We'll be in the corner. Aw. We'll be in the corner, there and the go. turkey will be looking at us. So I don't have to keep doing that. <laughs> there we go. All right. So, hey, for those people who, like, don't really care about a math formula here's the basic traditional cooking times okay again this is based on 325 degrees fahrenheit if you have a small bird a small turkey i don't know how many pounds that would be a small one but I it's 20, 20 minutes pounds. per pound plus 20 minutes or a large bird is 15 minutes per pound plus 15 minutes I think if it's under 20 pounds. And that's normally... It would be small. Budget, I'm with you, budget bushcraft when that little red Ping. thing goes pop. Yeah. Yeah. So. Now, Halos and Heathen says they start their turkey upside down, and then they turn it over. I, I've, I've read that, too. Um, actually, uh, a lot of um, professional chefs, like in restaurants, that's what they do. Is, is because, And that is because of the geometry of the turkey. And you know, the way it is is that you're actually supposed to do that. But uh, the safe thing that you want to do, and I don't think I put it in all four places in here, but um, you want to make sure that it's cooked in four different places to 165 degrees. If you stuff the turkey, the center of the stuffing, under the armpit, the breast, maybe three places, because I can't think of a fourth one. But if you use a, uh, that's what makes the thing go pop. Okay. Okay? Yeah. All right. So there's TWG7 turkey. says to season butter and place under the skin and then rub it all over it too. Yeah, I've never tried to turn it over either, Kathleen. I've, I've always 
Like anytime my family's ever made a turkey, we always just put the breast up, breast side up and shove some stuffing up its butt and <laughs> put her in the oven. Let her and when go. the little let red thing pops, we let it sit there for a little longer and then we take that out. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to Santa's Travels. Santa's Travels. Santa's, Santa's travels. travels. Yes, Haunted okay. Trucking, we were talking about food. Food. Yeah. Turkey. All right, so how many stops does Santa make every year? Well, based on statistics and how many children under the age of 14 that are worldwide, he makes 842 million stops. Wow. Every year. And remember, some of those stops would have multiple children in the house, too. Yes. So, yes. you know. Yeah. yeah, he does stop a lot. He has he has quite a few stops that he has to make. And uh, Should I let chat try to answer these? Lady, Lady C's Crazy Life Adventure says happy holidays to happy us. Happy holidays, so. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. <laughs> TWG7 is now hungry. So Desmond Donner says that's a lot of mince pies. pies. Yes. Hey, Desmond Donner, we got one here. Yeah. When you say mince pies, that's one right. here is kind of actually funny. Yeah. Um, so how many miles does Santa cover every Christmas? Anybody know how many miles? Wow. The earth is a big place. Should I? Have, no, I'll just keep going. The These earth are, is a very big we'll place. Some, yeah. 221 million miles. Wow. 221 that's million crazy. miles is just a huge amount. And we think we travel a lot. All right, so here's one. We'll leave this one for chat to answer, okay? How many hours does Santa have to make his deliveries? How many hours does Santa have to make his deliveries? Leave a guess in chat. Mm -hmm. Desmond Donder says 24. TWG7 says 36. Joy says 24. Lady Vamp says 48. Haunted Trucking says 24. I think that's everybody who wants to say it. Is that everybody who wants to answer? Haunted right. Trucking, I think, was so the, the last So the correct one. answer is 48. And we're going to let Mary Ann explain the science behind that. I think we should have Lady Vamp do that because, you know, she got that right too. Uh, but basically... Santa can go against the international date line. Backwards. Backwards against it. So he's he's got a little bit of extra time to get across that planet. That's right. It'd be 48 hours right. instead of 24. Yes, because he he's, he, he's going backwards. And so then he can loop the earth a couple of times and still manage to have Christmas Eve on the books. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody That's always thought. That's everybody always says. Question. Oh, he's got... 24 hours or just the night of Christmas Eve but the night of Christmas Eve is different in different places yeah. around the world I, like when I was in Russia I was 14 hours different you know so he's got a little extra time that he can play with that way. so how fast is Santa's sleigh when he's traveling because he's gonna make all them stops and travel all those miles and everything in 48 hours that's a hard one I don't think we'll get it. so there we go Oh, oh, that thing's popping up. That's okay. Just click off. That's all right. Click off. You're there good. We go. You're good. So 1,279 miles per second. Yeah. Which, which is e quite a lot. Which equals out to be 6,395 times the speed of sound. He's moving. He's he's quick. He's moving quick. For a big for a big guy, he he sure does move fast. And that's why people don't see him that much. That's right. He's only there a very short time at your house. So Lady Van, fast as be the light. Yeah, he's moving he's, quick. He's, he's hopping it. He's going a little bit faster than that. But yeah, <laughs> Haunted Trucking says, yeah, my truck can do that. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> Kathleen says, them reindeer are fast. That's right. And Desmond's daughter says, it's the mince pies. <laughs> All right, so that equals out to be Santa delivers presents to 5,556 homes a second. A second. And he drinks 130 million liters of milk. 
in the night. And that's, yeah, that's that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. So uh, I, I struggle. I, I struggle. About. I struggle having like you know that six glasses, eight six eight ounce glasses of water six, a day. Ounce glasses of water. Yeah. He's yeah. having ten. Whatever. Yeah. So <laughs> how many calories does he he take in? So this is where uh, where I was saying uh, Desmond's, Desmond's daughter. Desmond's gonna like it. Um, if he has milk and cookies at all these stops, he'll actually consume 150 billion calories in that one night, which is 60,000 times his daily recommended intake. Let's not tell K. <laughs> yeah, let's not tell K from Happy Trails Hiking. Because that would be more than a 30 day workout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can keep flipping, flipping back here because I don't know what the next slide's going to be when I click that button. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just finished this like 10 minutes before oh, we went geez. live. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, so ATJH Travels is here. Welcome. Glad things are going well for you guys. Um, and we have uh, Desmond's Donders uh, said something about... Uh, the food again uh, kathleen says no bathroom break no he does not have time 48 hours no bathroom break and oh, how many liters of milk he's flying up to the air just let it go over the side <laughs> oh my gosh just like the airplanes right? yeah put it in autopilot and uh, let it fly uh twag7 <coughs> also wants to know what about the homes that leave whiskey <laughs> oh goodness uh was that said something about well that depends on the type of cookie i must have missed that something there uh <laughs> and hey loves and heathens thanks for stopping by you got to run and get ready for your show i know but thank you so much for joining us all right there we go all right so let's move on shall we let's talk about a little it <laughs> little it kathleen says the yellow snow is actually from santa <laughs> yeah that's right if you see a yellow trail of snow that's that's just woo, that's santa yeah <laughs> and pusha studio says oh no i just cut the tail in with uh halos and heathens there and she probably walked in they probably walked in on the uh santa snow santa, santa letting it rip hello pusha <laughs> studios <laughs> All right, we're talking the science of Christmas. We're going to move on to Santa's data storage. Santa's, Santa's data, data storage. That, this one's all you. You this love this. Me. You're all very right. into this. So, with the amount of letters that Santa receives, okay, over, you know, what is that, a billion? 1.8 billion letters he receives <laughs> each, each year. That's a lot of letters. Yeah, so if those were scanned and put, you know, I thought computer, I had a lot of papers to grade. He's, like, oh, he's got a lot of letters to read <laughs> well they estimate that each page is 500k all right so that would be a total of 859 gigabytes that's not bad no that's not bad but the uh, u.s children alone would take up 24 megabyte that's not bad not bad at all so they're saying as data storage <laughs> that's not bad all right Let's talk about reindeer. Reindeer? Reindeer. Okay, this reindeer whole, are fun. Whole thing about reindeer. Fun. Reindeer are fun. Reindeer are fun. Uh, Pusha Studios, I think it was, said, "You know that uh, you're not supposed to eat the yellow snow, right?" So I, of course, had to respond by saying, "I thought it was lemonade flavored." Yeah. <laughs> yellow snow makes your coffee taste funny. <laughs> There's a t-shirt right oh, there. Yellow, show, yellow snow makes your coffee taste funny. I, I think that's funny. So how fast do you think reindeer have to run in order to take flight? I'd say pretty fast. Anybody know? Anybody have a guess? Sacramento Paranormal Investigators said they've been on the naughty list permanently since they were 12. Oh, that's not good. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that's so sad. You need to start doing some good so you can get on the nice list. Well, TWG7 is saying super fast. 
Cushion Studio says speed of light. It's not that fast, actually. It's not just not a takeoff. We're saying just, just a, a takeoff. Just to just to lift off the ground. How fast does a, a reindeer have to be <laughs> speed running? of light for a reindeer? <laughs> yeah. How how fast does a does the reindeer have to be running? It's actually they estimate 120 miles an hour. That's right. But of course, reindeer don't run that fast. But Santa's reindeer, of course they do. Oh, but, of course they do. Um, They're special. Yeah, they estimate that if 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 they could run that fast, um, they would lift off the ground. Anything that moves fast, anything that would move, you know, unless it's aerodynamic, will pick up off the ground at a certain speed. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. All right. So. Here's another question. Are Santa's reindeer male or female? And you can't go by their names. Right, because most of the time, everybody always thinks that Vixen would be female. Yeah. Are Santa's reindeer male or female? And if you know a little bit about reindeer, you can answer that question. That's right. But most normal people that aren't <laughs> science-y type wouldn't know this so biological we have several people that are saying male but desmond's daughter says female and i think that uh well desmond's daughter's is correct that's right they would be female why because the, males would have lost their antlers they would have by that time of year yes reindeer lose their antlers they do uh it, Basically, it's a change in, in the amount of their sex hormones that they actually have. Mm -hmm. And so it will start to reuptake them. Uh, and so it reabsorbs the base of their antlers. And then they, they, when they are rutting and, and scratching them on trees and things, they fall, just fall off. So this time of year, they would have already had that reabsorption start to happen and they would have lost their antlers. So every time you see Santa's reindeer at Christmas time, they have antlers, so then they're female. We've always said that we can get more work done, haven't we, ladies? Oh, please. <laughs> please. Yeah, so they would all technically have been female. Okay, let's move on. Here's another question. Why is Rudolph's nose red? And don't say because he drank too much. <laughs> I, I see budget bush crap getting ready to type that in there. I think well, that's I hilarious. know why my nose is red. <laughs> <laughs> Ruby the Golden Retriever said, I knew it had something to do with antlers, but I didn't remember that. But somebody else, oh, who was it? It's moving too fast for me. Uh, Desmond's daughter said, think about it. Santa wouldn't have stopped and asked for directions. He's a man. <laughs> oh, dear. Kathleen says that poor Rudolph was born that way. And Desmond's daughter says, there goes my answer. <laughs> uh, Lady Vamp says, because it was cold. Haunted Trucking says, boo. <laughs> okay. All right. So the answer is one of two different reasons. Go ahead and explain that, science person. So some uh, individuals, some scientists, believe that it's actually... A result of sunburn because if he's up there and he has a nice very white pale complexion uh, and that skin area is very uh, well it, it's it's soft and you know it needs some love it would need some moisturizer or something but anyhow it would be such light colored and pale complexion that all of the Sun UV light hitting all of the ice and snow which is bounced back and hit him and get a little sunburn on his nosy other people they'll say it is parasites so that he was living in an environment where he managed to pick up some parasites in his nose and of course they wanted to live there because it was nice and warm in there uh, and they gave him an infection of his respiratory system and so that's actually uh, the result of an infection from parasites yeah poor Rudolph yeah. Poor, yeah. Rudolph. Oh, poor Rudolph. Of course, it could be a genetic deformity, a, a genetic mutation as well, you know. So, he could be born that way. Somebody had mentioned he was born that way. Uh, but most people are um, saying it's either sunburn or parasites these days. Okay, next question. How do reindeer stay warm at the North Pole? Anybody have a guess? 
Anyone? 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 This budget book scratch is going with bioluminescent parasite. Yes, I like it. Uh, Desmond Stonder says, but it's dark in the Arctic in the winter. I don't buy it. No, I, I see that they're talking back and forth mm -hmm. and everything about Rudolph being special and everything. What was that that they said about about uh, reindeer? Let's talk about that. It's not on the slide, but let's talk about that. They they said on that show that reindeer, mm -hmm. if something happens to one of the reindeer, they will alienate it. Mm -hmm. Like if it gets sick or hurt or yeah. something, mm -hmm. or is different. It. If it's different from everyone else in the, in what, the what do you call it, pack of reindeer? Mm -hmm. I don't know. But if if you know if something happens, they'll alienate that reindeer, kind of like the story of Rudolph. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's something different. Yeah, it's almost as if the person who wrote that. Had a little science background. Yeah, kind of knew that. All right, so how do the reindeer stay warm at the North Pole? So let's see here. Um, <laughs> hollow hair. They have fur. Um, fur. Lots of reindeer babies. <laughs> Uh, someone makes them little blankies. Um, what else? Uh, da -da, da -da, da -da. Da -da, da -da. Who said hollow hair? Uh, oh. oh, that was back a ways now. Uh, Desmond's Donners. Desmond's Donners. They are really good with this whole holiday thing. I think Desmond Donners saw the Science of Christmas. And they just didn't tell or us. they might have read the books. That could be. There are books. Roger, Hi Roger Highfield, I think it is, yep. uh, wrote the books. Um, the Science of Christmas, the Physics of Christmas. I have three copies of it. <laughs> one, one actually has a little uh, battery-operated light that you can see the Christmas tree light up on the front of. and Yeah, it's cool. <sighs> Three copies of it. Okay. But they're all different, you know, all versions. All right, so the answer is the, the hair, the fur. The hair and the <laughs> fur, they have special hairs that are hollow, and that extra yes. air guard inside hairs. there creates additional insulation. Yeah, they're yeah. guard, they they're guard, yeah, guard, guard hairs. hairs. Yes, yeah. Yeah. they are. I want a reindeer. I told you that while I was putting this together. That'd be kind of cool to have a reindeer as a pet. Gotta get a caribou. I wonder if they bite. Oh. I don't want anything that bites. Because all oh my luck, it would bite. Anything me. will bite if you take it off. <laughs> so, speaking of Rudolph. Speaking of Rudolph. When did Rudolph come around? Can I bring the slide up? <laughs> Jeez. All right. When did Rudolph first appear? When did Rudolph first appear? I keep losing chat. I need another screen. There we go. Anybody know when Rudolph first appeared? Nature Nerd Outdoors. Good for you, buddy. <laughs> when he was born. <laughs> Joy Store says 1860s. Pusha says when he was born. Uh, TWG7 says when he was born. <laughs> I think those were funny answers. When he was born. When Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer was made. Actually, it was 10 years before Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer the song yeah. was made. Yeah, I guess we could time. We could do this. All right, so actually it was 1939. Montgomery Ward. You guys remember Montgomery Ward's? It was a department do. store. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Montgomery Wards had a booklet produced that was written by Robert May, Robert L. May, actually. And actually, we have one of these on the watch list. I think we're going to buy it. It'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyways, this book was made, it, it was commissioned by Montgomery Ward <laughs> to make this book, and they gave it away free to kids in 1939. Ten years later is when the song came out mm -hmm. based on the book. Based on the pamphlet. Yeah, based yeah. on the pamphlet. So it yep. was a free pamphlet. Of course, they're not free now, but... Yeah, the little, um, little it, pamphlet booklet. It'd be kind of cool to have one of these. This yeah. is where Rudolph... Made came, his, came his debut. Made his debut. That's it was right. before the song, and then, of course, the 
TV series came on over after the song. So who sung the song? Well, we know who sung the song. Do you guys in chat know who sung the song? Anybody it in chat? It wasn't who wrote it. Was? It was not who wrote it's it. It's not who it wrote it, it, but who sung who it? Who it. recorded it? Go ahead, Mary. Tell him who it was, because I think he's your favorite. He is the singing cowboy. Yeah. Yes, he's mine. I love that Christmas album. I have it on uh, a CD now. Oh. Um, yep, Gene Autry is the singing cowboy. Okay, so Pusha, the Pusha the Mod is the real Pusha. The other one is the troll. What? We got a troll? <clears throat> yeah. So the oh. Pusha that's in here, that's a mod, is the real Pusha Studios. The other one is not. So just so you guys know, I whatever. You know. I didn't even notice that yet. Yeah. No, you're not, because I didn't make you a mod, so. Anyways, so, um, Gene Autry is my favorite, uh, Christmas album there, so. All right. Thanks, the real Pusha Studios. No, there's no need to apologize. Don't I just worry. It's yeah, all we go, good. Uh, it it's happens. all good. Yeah. <clears throat> Any house? All right, candy canes. Let's talk candy canes. We need to give the fake send the fake Pusha candy cane? a box of candy canes. Lump of coal. Lump of coal. <laughs> All right, you heard it. Mrs. Claus said lump of coal. That's right. All right. <clears throat> candy canes. What do I have about candy canes? How many candy canes does Bob's Candy Canes, which is the only real candy cane to buy? I know. Right here, folks. Look at that. Look now, at that. Bob's, Bob's Candy, candy canes. canes. This isn't a giveaway, is it? No. No. No, Bob's Candy Canes Bob's actually candy canes. was owned by uh, and created by Bob McCormick. Uh, back in 1919 and he uh, used to make them for his friends and family and then eventually like through the generations it became a big well-known factory uh, in Georgia actually and let me think here it was it was a few years back it was uh, like 2005 ish uh, they actually sold the company the McCormick family actually sold the company and it is not owned by them anymore uh, but the Bob's brand and the Bob's recipe still is you know being utilized today it's now um, the Ferrara company uh, has has their their brand um, which Brock's is also sending some of theirs out this year uh, they're labeling it Bob's Brock's that's what this one is. Yes, this one's Bob's Brock's. Yeah, I don't want to hold it up to the camera because last week it yeah, a little set it back. way there out of focus. Go. But... That's good enough. That's good enough. Yeah. Uh, but I've been buying Bob's candy canes every year for for years, decades. Uh, they're the only ones that I think taste really, really super awesome. I love Bob's candy canes. There's a difference when you eat the different kinds. So I'm interested to try the this one that's labeled Bob's from Brock's and see just if if it's really Bob's. <laughs> uh, oh, the controversy here. Candy canes banned because apparently Jesus was not politically correct. Um, I'm pretty sure there were no candy canes in Bethlehem. Can't make this up. Yeah, everything's getting uh, in, in trouble these days. But uh, I don't know what Bob had actually envisioned, whether he thought it was a cane well, or not. Well, the candy cane, though, is actually... <clears throat> The actual candy cane mm -hmm. is fashioned after the hook of the shepherds. Well, that's what they're kind of saying. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, TWG7 likes Jelly Belly candy canes. I like Bob's. Oh, okay. So the answer is $6.4 I bet you he, 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 he <laughs> gave him time to Google it. What was the answer? Let's see. Oh, no. 
it's over a billion per year, 2.5 million a day, 135,000 pounds a day, five days a week, 24 hours a day. Now That's how much Bob's produced. Yes, or, now this yeah. was at the time that Bob McCormick's family still owned the yeah. company. Uh, I do not know how much of a change there has been uh, since uh, Ferrara Candy Company has taken over. Uh, but that was when uh, the McCormicks still owned the facilities. Uh, Kathleen likes ribbon candy. Um, I've not, to be honest, I remember ribbon candy as a kid and we just saw some at the store like not like a week ago. But I don't think I physically ever ate it. Did you ever eat it? <laughs> Joy Steer says candy canes are 75% off in July. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. What did you ask me? I was watching chat because we had that troll. Yeah, but what? yeah, yeah. Um, I, would, I was saying that I don't remember physically eating the ribbon candy. Like, I remember it being around when I was growing up and, and that, but I don't physically remember eating it. I don't it. either. I don't either. I remember seeing it, yeah, but I don't, I don't mm -hmm. remember eating it. Yeah. All right, next question. Do they wrap the candy canes before or after they put the bins in them? Thanks what do you for, think? Thanks for stopping by, ATJH. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, hope everything's well over in the uh, ATGH household. And yes. Much prayers and love coming your way. Okay. Um, there was I missed it again. Uh, oh, I think it was TWG7. Yes, we packed them up and took them out the next year. And so long as you keep them in a good environment, yeah, which yes, we'll talk they about. will last for a few years. Which we'll talk about. I think it's one mm -hmm. of the questions. It is. It is. Um, but I was just saying that that, that, is, that will happen. Kathleen really likes that ribbon candy, though. So. Okay, what did I do? Did I do something? What do you mean? I got the nails in the leg. Oh, no, I just wanted to make sure you didn't go too far because they were keeping it a secret oh that's so all okay. right um all right do they wrap has anyone answered a question has anybody even has anyone even paid attention to me uh lady vamp <laughs> says before care? lady before? vamp says before <laughs> the answer is I'm just before so confused the answer I'm is before go ahead tired, click, tired. Click the all right here we go Yes, it's before because it's easier to do when they're straight. That's right. That makes sense. That's just common sense right there. All right. So I think the next one might be. Yeah. Oh, Pusha said before too. Yeah, I what, missed it. What temperature do candy canes need to be stored at to keep them from getting gummy? That's what happens is the moisture. Right. They'll suck in the moisture. Right. Yeah. So you can't buy them in July. And you know. T-Town Mary Ellen says she said before as well. So if you get them discount you just want to keep them at 78 degrees fahrenheit mm -hmm. 40 degrees 40 percent 40 percent humidity to the to the yeah i don't have humidity you don't have it. humidity so it's 78 degrees fahrenheit and 40 percent humidity yeah relative and that'll to keep the them fresh now do you want to explain 90, that <laughs> joy says 98.6 <laughs> show them, show them show in your <laughs> oh i was gonna say she was eating them but okay oh okay this is 98.6 your body temperature? Yes, that's yeah. why I was saying she was, oh, she was adjusting them. Uh, so do you want to explain about Bob's, or did you? I explained about Bob's. The NASA? I, oh, no, I didn't. No. Uh, so Bob's candy canes, actually, and the, one of the reasons why I was, like, super excited about um, Bob's candy canes, and I've been dealing with them for decades now, um, is they actually have a tie to NASA. Oh, TW says, yeah, don't keep them in Florida. <laughs> Uh, you could have there. you can have air conditioning and make it all good, you know. Pusha says they keep well in uh, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so NASA actually created uh, something called the heat pipe for um, the space station and things like that. So they were having some some issues, and Bob's Candy Canes was having similar issues. So in 1987, uh, right before. Uh, the the last Bob uh, candy cane or 
the last McCormack actually became president, he went ahead and he partnered up with them and he he purchased their abilities to do this. And basically he, uh, super cool, 87. It was 87? Mm -hmm. Okay. So he's, he basically super cools the air by going over this heat pipe and pulling out all the moisture and he, then he super cools it and then he pushes it back over this heat pipe again to reheat it to 78 degrees. But now when it's, it's over humid. there that time, it's less humid. And so then that's the way they keep the air filtration in did the Did you tell them that Bob's facility. was in Atlanta, Georgia? I did say it was in Georgia. Okay. I didn't so that would be a high humidity. Oh, and, super, super humid. But they, they won this award with NASA because they use that same technology um, to keep the candy canes yeah. at that time. I think that's kind of cool. I do, but. too. Yeah. But you guys didn't know that. And that's why... I bet you learned something new here at Panty D Videos today. I, I loved Bob's <laughs> candy canes for their flavor. Bet you don't care. But I love the extra science-y thing and how they're tied to NASA. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Candy so canes Joy is NASA. headed out. So thank you for stopping by. Have a good evening. Goodbye, Joy. All right, TWG7 says dinner is almost done and we make them hungry. Uh oh, I don't have animation on that one. Oh, that's all right. I'll have to fix that. Oh, okay. go ahead, keep talking. So Desmond's daughter said that they did learn something new today, and Budget Bushcraft says science is our friend. TWG7's gonna eat and watch with us. That's awesome. What are you having? I can't remember. Did you tell us? I think we're having pizza. We have a, is that a chicken? Um, I don't bacon remember. Bacon ranch pizza or mm -hmm. some kind of pizza. Yeah. Oh, where's All that? All right. Insert animation. So, coming up, in case you were, oh yes, that's right. TWG7 said that they were going to do fish tacos or something like that, but then they saw they had pulled pork, so they're ha she's having pulled pork. Oh, that sounds good, yes. too, pulled pork. Yeah. We don't have that, do we? No. Thanks, TWG7. Give me a... <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> oh, and she's having them on Hawaiian rolls, too. Daggone it. <laughs> that sounds good. All right. Kusha Studios is having sticky ribs and whipped potatoes. <sighs> mm -hmm. Do you put, by any chance, dill in your whipped potatoes? I remember having dill whipped mashed potatoes, and they were just so delicious, but I've never put it in my own. Dill? The dill. mashed potatoes? Yeah. It was fantastic. I don't know. That could be one of those things that's either good or disgusting. It's so. fantastic. <laughs> All right. All right. Go ahead. Christmas trees. Christmas it is. trees. Christmas trees. Okay. Why are evergreens used as a Christmas tree? And I don't have a question mark there. You are fired. I know. We didn't edit. Yeah. Anybody know? Anybody know why? Evergreens are used. I don't know if they know that, but Pusha says that they put dill on their new potatoes, but green onion and melted butter on whipped potatoes. And TWG7 says, I hate dill. Sorry. <laughs> Desmond Donner says no. We stumped Desmond's Donner. It's oh, crazy. okay. Well, we'll tell you. Either that or it's no, I don't put dill on my mashed potatoes. The evergreen tree, the tradition of, of Christmas trees, okay, is actually a pagan yes. belief, a pagan tradition. Yes. It dates back because they thought that an evergreen, since it didn't change colors or anything, it was it always green. It didn't lose green. its leaves, it didn't it get had ugly colors. Magical colored. powers. Right. So they would use they used to decorate those trees around uh, the end of the year, getting ready for the new season to come up. So that's where the tradition came from, originated from. All right, what year did the commercial tree industry? Oh, well, there's another typo. Begin in the U.S. in New York, and I forgot a question mark. Wow. What year did it start in the United States? Anybody know that one? Um, no, but, have... the, but Pusha says that the first Christmas tree was erected in then German occupied Latvia in the Black Heads House Squire, which started the tradition. That would be bringing them indoors. 
Okay. When did they bring him to the U.S.? Oh, no. TWG7's kitten just ran out the back door. That's not good. Uh-oh. Better go catch her. Especially kitten. We're kitten. not getting any Lost. answers. No, so I don't think we'll anybody talk. knows. All right, we'll tell them. It was 1805. 1805. And that's because those people over there in uh, England came to the United States and brought the traditions with them. That's why we do it in the United States. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So the kitten has been caught. Yay. So here's an interesting question that could spin off a little bit of topic and discussion here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is it harmful to the environment to have a live tree in your home? What do you think? Cut down these trees and bring them in the house and decorate them for the season and basically get rid of them. What do you think? Is that harmful to the environment? Midnight Raven is here. Hello, hello. And TWG7 says, remember I got that screened in pool? <laughs> so it was easy to catch. Oh, there you go. I got yeah. a big cage out there. I was worried. I was worried, but that I didn't realize that was a direct connection. So that's good. Uh, let's see here. It says, it's harmful to me and my allergies, says TWG7. Uh, Lady Vamp says, no, just to the tree. Uh, Budget Bushcraft, who plants a tree in their den? <laughs> oh, goodness. Kathleen is headed out. Thanks for joining us. And Desmond Donner says, no, as the trees rot down after use and more trees are planted. Well, you're close, Desmond Donners, on that mm -hmm. one. You're very close. Very close. Because the Christmas trees that are sold on lots, the live Christmas trees, are grown on farms specifically for that purpose. Mm -hmm. Specifically for that purpose. And then purpose. once they chop them down to sell them, they, they do plant, plant more. Ones. They plant they more replant. of them. They plant them every so year. So it's actually better for the environment than an artificial Christmas tree, which is made of PVC and chemicals and all that other stuff. So, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Plus, you can use um, the dead tree when the season is over for other things. For example, uh, you can get it chipped, mm -hmm. and then you can have it for, uh, what do you call that stuff? Outside? Some people Mulch. even take them and chuck them into lakes, and those are little environments. It's basically a natural and... reef. And yeah. so here's a, here's a tip that I got when my brother played basketball when he was a little tiny second grader. <laughs> and uh, I heard from his, his coach at the time that he actually took his Christmas trees and chucked them out into the center of his pond. Yeah. And we're like, oh, okay, you know, and, and it makes sense. If you're a fisherman, you make a little, art, you know, natural artificial reef. I mean, it wasn't naturally making it there, but it's made of natural materials. Throw that in the middle of your pond. Where's all the little fishies going to go and hide and grow and make Breed. their breeding mm -hmm. stock? Yeah. And so when you're ready to go fishing, you know right where those you know fish right are going to be. There. That's right. Because you know where you drop that tree. Unless you're like me and TWG7 and you're allergic to them. If I had yeah. a live tree in this house, I would probably not make it through tonight. And I grew up with a live breathing. tree. I grew up with a live tree every year. Yeah. But since we got I this can't house, do it. now we do I've have never told this story home. before of why I'm allergic to them. I guess my mom's allergic too, but I'm allergic to them because <laughs> did I tell you this story? I don't think so. This All is right. new for me when too. When I guys. was going to college the first time back in the early nineties, I worked at Kmart and I worked I was the manager of the lawn and garden at Kmart. Okay, mm -hmm. so I was there working one day, and we got a load of evergreens in, and the uh, truck pulled in, and the guy wanted to run inside to, you know, take care of some stuff, and I said, well, go ahead, and I'll start unloading the truck. Mm -hmm. He didn't realize I was in the back of the truck and shut the doors. Oh, you did not ever tell me this story. Yeah, so I got stuck in the back of the truck while he went inside. Okay, so it was about half hour, 45 minutes, because he decided, you know, he's going to stop, get a sandwich and all kinds of stuff like that. When he came out, I was trapped inside that with the evergreens and that, and ever since then, I cannot be around an evergreen. I can't breathe. Wow. Yeah, I developed that allergy to that because of that 
particular thing. So needless to say, once I got out of the truck, I was done work for the day. (laughs) (laughs) I can't imagine that that would actually cause an allergy, but that's hilarious. I was like beet red and... (laughs) It you probably already like... had the, you probably already had the <coughs> allergy. Yeah, I probably made you know, it worse. And since it your out. mom has that allergy too, you <coughs> you probably already had it. So about ten years later, when I was working at Neoma, I was golfing at a golf outing. Uh-huh. Okay, and um, they decided we're going to walk it. Okay, and we we were on the back nine, and it was lined with evergreen trees. And it hit me again, and I had to be done. <laughs> you know, they had to bring a cart and rush me out, and I had to, yeah. So that's why we don't have a live tree, dear. <laughs> yeah. But we do have a tree that we got when we first got this house. Literally, we, we got the keys to the house. Uh, I think it was, no, I think it was, uh, I see it's empty. I, I see, I see. You're closest. Uh, but we got, we got the keys to the house. I think it was like, Three o'clock I'll tell in the, the story. afternoon. You, I'll tell them that story and, uh, and oh. go make me a cup of coffee. Do you want peppermint or do you Just like regular. regular? Regular, please. So uh, when we bought this house, it was a year before we got married. Now, Marianne's uh, parents uh, live literally five minutes from here. So I moved into the house when we first bought it, and we basically we didn't have anything. But the night that we got the keys... It was a few days before Christmas, so um, we went down to, I think it was maybe Home Depot or something like that, and of course Christmas trees were like dirt cheap, you know, because it was so close to Christmas and they had so many and all that other stuff. I think it was like $10. We bought this Christmas tree and got some decorations and we brought it over and we front window it's the only thing that was in the house and uh we still have that christmas tree we put it up every year it's in the in the front room so all right pine pine nut allergy Ooh. Alrighty here. She's coming back here shortly and we'll keep on going. TWG7, did you get your kitty cat back? Is it expired? No, it expires on Christmas, December 25th. Oh, really? Does yeah. It? No, I didn't even look at that. <laughs> I could have been drinking the expired milk for all I know. Uh, Only took a moment. All right. Okay, so let's talk about tinsel and garland. Ooh, tinsel. Tinsel and garland. All right. Uh-oh. Something's not working. Okay. All right, let's Did just, you s- there we go. Whoop, got delayed there a little bit. Okay. What'd you break while I was gone? I broke some. Give me a second. Mm. Okay, you go right ahead. So let's see here. Yes, Desmond Donner says, happy Christmas milk. <laughs> uh Now it's working. All right. All right. How many boxes of icicles? This is the Bright Star Company, mm-hmm. which I don't know. Is there any other company? I don't know of anybody make else who makes that I don't stuff. I don't, I don't like those icicles. I've always oh, hated them. My mother loves those icicles. I, I hate those icicles. So how many, how many boxes of icicles are sold each year? Anybody By know? By the Bright Star Got Company. Got a guess? No 
guesses yet. No guesses. No guesses yet. Bright Star Company makes icicles and garland. Tinsel, icicle, icicles, you know. All right, no guesses. No Moving guesses. on. Four no to guesses. six million boxes. Yeah, some years it's four million, some as high as six million. Yeah. And they stated in that in that video that they purposely will not tell you how they go into that box. Yes. So that so you, have you have to, to buy, buy new ones every year. It keeps them in business. Yep. I, last time I bought these things, they're under a buck, aren't they? Yeah. They're not that expensive. Yeah, they're not. But if you think about it, they're selling six million a year. That's six Budget million dollars correct. just 6. right there. Six point four billion. Yeah, it's just that's a straight answer for everything. <laughs> <laughs> but if you think about it, that's you know six million dollars a year just on icicles. Oh, absolutely. So. And they and they really don't even manufacture them. They buy they buy the rolls of and the they thing just and cut they it just and put it through it. a cutter and package. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. By the way, tinsel. Garland, icicles, they're all made of PVC as well. Yeah. They're so all that plastic. polyvinyl chloride yeah. PVC. And those, uh, these are actually then, um, they have a, a layer of aluminum over the top of them. Yeah. Uh, how much garland is produced each year? Anybody know? Budget Butch Craft's going to say 6.4 billion. <laughs> TWG7 says animals eat them and then poop them out, so we don't do that. <laughs> yeah, that would make some interesting Christmas decorations, some ornaments. <laughs> well, I I remember that. Like my my dogs did too. I remember it. I don't know. We don't do it because we have artificial trees and they screw up artificial trees. Plus, I don't like it, so you wouldn't yeah. have it anyway. <clears throat> TWG TWG says a trillion. Desmond Donner says a lot. All right, it's 150 million feet. It's enough to go to the moon and back. That's a lot of, a lot of garland. I and don't think that's again, feet. I think that might be miles. Uh, 150 million feet per year. Oh, okay. But oh, uh, again, that was that's just at the Bright Star Company, and there yeah. are lots of other companies who make garland as well. So. All right, so the last thing we're going to talk about is NORAD. NORAD. Santa Tracker. Santa Tracker. Has anybody followed this? Anybody heard of that? NORAD, Santa Tracking? I'm going to put the uh, link in the chat for those people who would like to go to NORAD's holiday event page. I'm going to look for that video if you want to tell them about it a little bit. So basically, uh, back, back, back in the 50s, it was actually 1955, and Sears and Roebuck actually had a ad. Shocker, a store had a Christmas ad. But they had an ad for a Santa hotline, but they misprinted or put the wrong phone number, and it turned out it was to... CONAD, which was the Continental Air Defense, which eventually becomes NORAD. Uh, and basically, all these little kids kept calling all night. And uh, they finally said, yeah, we see Santa. Go to bed. <laughs> and it became a tradition every year after that. Uh, and so they have a website. They have video footage that, you know, they've created in, in like a Atari-type game motif it's not good quality stuff that we have today that looks authentic and real uh, but they actually have these um, that they play on Christmas Eve and they show where Santa is on the planet how many gifts he's delivered how many cookies he's eaten all kinds of stuff it's really super cute and uh, they have games that you can play they have a whole website dedicated to it now so anyhow it's uh, noradsanta.org is the the web address and uh, I go there every year and I'm waiting for them to someday make a really good uh, update to the gaming type uh, footage that they have um, did you, TWG7 says, we tracked Santa every year. Have you done it with um, NORAD? I can't find the video. Well, that's not good. 
But last year we did have a video. Sean will eventually find it. Yeah. Uh, and we did a video that kind of talked about it because there's a great amount of detail for that. Um, they had different uh, audio tunes that they would send to radio stations every year and video footage and things like that back, 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 back in the day. Uh, they don't do that anymore. But our video last year that we did here on this channel uh, really delved into the NORAD thing a little bit more. So anyhow, that is NORAD. Hmm. Must not have been a Let's Talk Paranormal. I don't think it was. a different was. live stream. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it was a live stream. Just saying. Okay. Yeah, you we did a later. we did a longer video on it, and I think uh, yes. yes, budget bushcraft says, and yes, in the eighties, our computers were really crappy, and uh, the video footage in the show that I was uh, the Science of Christmas that I showed Sean and I used to show in my class. Um, there's a actually a segment of it from the NORAD channel from from that holiday thing that they do. And at the bottom it says 1998, December 24th, 1998. And literally the, the graphics are the same last year as they were in 1998. Uh, they have not upgraded a, as time has progressed, which I hope someday that they do. So but. I added it to... <laughs> which of Bushcraft says I'm, we're making him feel old. <laughs> Did you add it to your Christmas? I added it to the Christmas playlist. playlist. It's, it's okay. called NORAD Santa Track and Ghost Stories at Christmas. Okay. T-shirt giveaway. So we must have given away t-shirts. We must have them. given away a shirt then. Oh, Did and, 11 months ago. And we were looking, uh, we looked like we were both wearing our NORAD sweatshirts. Yeah. Uh, Are you watching it? <laughs> no, I was just going to show them that we, there's some. If you want to check that out, it's in the Christmas playlist. Oh, back when I wore makeup. <laughs> back when she wore makeup. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, we, we're wearing our Santa tracking thing. Let's see if I can bring this up. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's actually the sweatshirt that I wore last weekend. What a face you've got there. Yeah. I don't know how we do a computer screen with us. I have it here. 32-bit graphics in the early 90s. Yeah. And they are still the go. same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at That's funny. <laughs> that's actually before we had the studio set up. Yes, that was when we were still in the dining yeah. room. So we're wearing our uh, NORAD tracking sweatshirts. You said that. Yes. Yep. Oh, yeah. there's the ad. There's Go one, ahead, of, the, there's one of the ads. Yeah, that's the ad that they had for Sears and Roebuck that year. I can't remember. Did we play the audio on that? I can't remember if we played one of them audio ads. They, we may have. I don't quite remember for sure. Yeah. So we did like a, a detailed thing on NORAD. Mm -hmm. And I put it in that Christmas playlist if you guys want to go check that out it's actually kind of neat yep. so all right that's it for my presentation on the science of christmas so does anybody have anything else they want to throw in they're talking about uh atari and nintendo and the early graphics from the 90s are basically our commodore 64 days <laughs> Boom. I'll restore chat here. Okay. There we go. Okay. All right. There you go. Yeah, I used to have an Atari. We used to have an Atari. I didn't have a Commodore 64, though. I had an Amiga 1000. That was better. I had a Commodore 64. Yeah. I didn't know anything different, so. All right, so that's going to wrap up probably today's live stream. Mm -hmm. We've got about, well, we'll take about it an hour minutes. and a half. Yeah. Six, seven more minutes. Next week we're going to be talking about ghost stories at Christmas. Christmas ghost stories. I don't know. I might have, uh, 
We might have Boris do some stuff, Ooh. maybe. I don't know. Boris we'll telling ghost stories at Christmas? Yeah, might. Might have him do stuff. I don't know. Then again, we might not. I, I don't know yet. <laughs> but that's the topic scheduled for okay. next Saturday. All right. Because they used to tell ghost stories on Christmas Eve. They did. And we're going to talk about that. Ghost stories of Christmas is long, long ago. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're going to go have dinner now, right? We are. Mm -hmm. And I think, much for I think TWG7 is going to go have dinner now, too. What's this here? Budget Bushcraft said, in 1989, I did my final computer science associate program on Atari 800XL in basic programming. Holy cow. Wow. I bet you that was fun. I bet you hmm. that was fun. My first, my first uh, computer that I, I, my parents bought me, I was uh, maybe about 12, 13. It was a uh, TRS-80, and it would store programs on cassette tapes. And my first program I wrote was in BASIC, and it was a Mad Lib. You guys remember Mad Libs? I do. Where it would ask you, like, a noun, a proper name, a adjective or whatever mm -hmm. so i wrote a computer program that did that it asked you those questions and then it spit out the thing and it would print it and so i got one done and i went to add the second one and it was so big it wouldn't load into the memory of the computer because the, the computer memory was only 16k <laughs> <laughs> so i blew up the first computer it didn't blow it up it's just my program wouldn't work crashed it crashed it yeah, yeah, the Trash 80. Yeah, that was my first one. I don't know how many I've had since. My lord, lots, lots and lots. Oh, yeah, you, you've had a lot lots of computers lots. through the years. And I'm thinking about getting it. Well, we got to get a new one. This one here is not doing well. This one here is on its last leg. But this thing's about, what, five, six years old? Yeah. Probably. <clears throat> yeah. Alrighty, folks. Hey, we want to thank you guys very much for coming and playing with us tonight. We've had a great time. I hope you enjoyed the science of Christmas. Hope you got a couple little tidbits that you can uh, tell around the uh, Christmas table this holiday season. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So next week we're going to go back into the darkness a little bit and do Christmas stories or ghost stories at Christmas to the darkness <laughs> so Desmond Zonders either needs a new ghost story or they need a new computer I think a new computer I think that's what they're talking about <laughs> I think too but we're going to say a, a ghost story too oh let me put that up again in case you guys want to try for that book oh. okay. if you guys want to try it for that book Budget Bushcraft said the first PC I was able to afford was the 286X SX 286SX. 286. Mm -hmm. Budget, you are old. That's an old computer. <coughs> and Desmond Zonder says, thanks for the stream. Enjoying a rare Saturday on this interweb thingy. The interweb. <laughs> this interweb thingy. All right, Happy trails. You're here. You're at a party. So you're we're muted. But she wanted to say hi. Were you were you watching? Should we say? Yeah, go ahead. Were you watching when you won the book this week? <laughs> if you want to try to win one next week, or like what you gotta do. Happy Trails Hiking did. Go to our Patreon page. Just follow us on Patreon. You don't have to pay to be a subscriber. Just follow our Patreon page. Mm -hmm. Find that post that has that picture of that book and reply to it with hashtag Santa. And next week, we'll draw another lucky winner. That's Send right. you out a signed copy of the Elf Workers Union The Handbook. UEA Elf Workers Union Handbook. United Elfs Association. <laughs> so Happy Trail says, yay! So, 
what do you say there, sir? I think it's time to go get some food. What do you think? Get food? Yep. All right. Hope you enjoy your party there, Happy Trails. And hope the rest of you enjoy your evening and your weekend. And we'll see you back here next week. Next week, Lanterman's Mill. Yes, for the uh, videos. holiday show from there. The um, uh, old time Christmas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, folks. Hey, until next time. Thanks for watching. And happy hunting. Oh, I didn't have the outro ready. Oh, you didn't? Whoa. Oh, that's not good. Let's try again. Hey, folks, till next time. Thanks for watching. And happy hunting. If you'd like to see more videos from Panic D videos in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and smash that bell for notifications. Also, help support the channel by sharing this video with your friends and family and anyone else who might be interested in the paranormal. Thanks for watching and happy hunting.